so good afternoon and welcome back to the lecture series of the fundamentals of mccnc machine tools in the new year i would like to convey my sincere thanks and good wishes to all the members present over here i believe that this particular new year will bring lot of opportunities hope prosperity to you and your family returning back to the topic in the last class we had discussed about the closed loop and open loop control analysis which deals with or which includes total pulse count pulse frequency encoder gain gear ratio and we had solved quite a good number of problems particularly those which appears in competitive examination like gate today we will discuss interpolation this is one of the very powerful activities of the machine control unit or more precisely the responsibility of the data processing unit the term interpolation is nothing new in the engineering fraternity quite often we undertake this interpolation activities whenever straight forward data pertaining to a particular <coughs> property values are not available let me give you one example in mechanical engineering particularly in the study of thermal engineering or thermodynamics whenever we are supposed to deal with the water or steam as your working substance different properties values are available in the steam table corresponds to a particular pressure and the corresponding saturation temperature so for the standard values of the pressure different values of enthalpy entropy internal energy specific volume these are available but in the numerical problems in the exercise book or even in the examination hall we ought to calculate the these parameters for a particular pressure which is not directly available in the steam table say for instance different these property values are available for the pressure one bar same set of variables are listed or available against pressure two bar now if you are told to calculate what are the different property values which will be utilized for further analysis we ought to calculate these parameters for 1.5 bar in that case we have to resort to interpolation that means knowing the data values for the two extreme limits that is one bar and two bar with the help of interpolation or rather linear interpolation in particular we will be able to calculate very easily what will be the different property values for 1.5 bar the same logic is extended in case of interpolation in cnc or nc machine tool as far as our programming part is concerned as far as the tool movement is concerned the tool is supposed to move from one point to the next point following a definite trajectory now while doing so the system controller or the machine control unit needs to calculate what of the intermediate closely spaced points which the cutting tool should follow to navigate the particular trajectory in space so that computation of the intermediate points what exactly is the interpolation activities which the data processing unit is supposed to perform so <clears throat> with this background we will move to the uh, details of the analysis or the our discussion so the content wise concept of interpolation in ncnc types of interpolation point to point interpolation and some solved problems for illustration purpose so interpolation in ncnc refers to the determination of closely spaced intermediate points between the two given end points while traveling by the tool from one point to another following a definite trajectory this trajectory is dictated to the program or that is captured or that is the intention of the programmer that according to the geometry of the job the tool is supposed to follow that particular trajectory it may be from point to point it may be straight line it may be circular <coughs> so in that case how the system will be able 
to calculate the intermediate points between the two given extreme points so that the exact path can be generated and that particular path would be followed by the cutting tool while moving from the starting point towards the end point. So as I told, this is the one of the most powerful activities of the data processing unit that is the DPU or machine control unit. So three types of interpolation which are very prominent and we ought to discuss one after another in three different lecture series. First today we will begin with the point to point, then we will go for the straight line that is the second category and the third one is the circular one. What is point to point? This particular is a system or interpolation is also referred to as finite positioning system. As the name implies, the objective of the PTP control is to move the cutting tool to reach a predefined location accurately. In this particular <coughs> approach or mode, the path along which the tool is moving that is of no significance. Only it will start from a definite point and reach to the destination point correctly without any respect or without any regard to the path which the cutting tool is following. That is why this particular uh, type of interpolation is identified as point to point interpolation. The name suggests that we are interested about the correct achievement of the position from one point to the target point. Another important attribute of this point to point interpolation is that the speed or path by which this movement is accomplished is hardly of any significance. Since this motion, particularly this point to point motion is utilized distance when there will not be any contact between the tool and job. That means when the cutting is not on progress. So apart from the in metal cutting it is also very common that in 80% cases the tool movement is idle movement. So our objective should be to reduce the time of movement of such idle movement rather so that eventually the cycle time is reduced. That is why the CNC or the NC systems are so designed that the system will automatically use the highest possible velocity so that the movement time is reduced. <coughs> so the speed, neither the speed nor the path is important because we are interested only to ensure correct location of the final destination point. Once the tool reaches the desired location, the machining operation is performed at that particular position. And the very good example to understand this PTP movement is the drilling. In case of drilling, what happens? Suppose one or two or any number of drills to be carried out at different locations. So we identify following the coordinate geometry, what are the coordinates of the different whole center point. And the tool will move in space. Keep in mind that tool would supposed to move in space as fast as possible from one location to the other location before drilling. Once it reaches the correct location, then it will follow or it will penetrate the job with the desired RPM and the feed so that proper penetration according to the desired depth can be carried out and after completion of the full depth penetration, the, it will reverse back and it will be it will come out of the drill and it will move to the second hole location. Then it will repeat the same operations. Then it will move in space and move to the third position if at all present. So likewise, the tool movement from one location to other location, whole location, take place in the space, and that is why there is no contact between the tool and the job and since high velocity is employed to reduce the cycle time one should be careful that while moving from one location to other location in the PTP mode there should not be any collision between the tool and the job or any unwanted substance or uh, items otherwise there may be possibility of any catastrophic failure or damage since no cutting is performed while moving between holes in space 
there is absolutely no need for controlling the motion of the tool between hole center locations that implies the path is not at all of any significance because we are not the tool is not undertaking any cutting action only it is covering up some distance and to reduce the cycle time it should move at the highest possible velocity which is available in the machine as designed by the machine tool manufacturer so these are the some of the key attributes coming to the next one <coughs> in ptb systems the motion along different axes are not synchronized this we will discuss with the help of a small diagram that means you have to realize in which plane the motion is taking place tool movement it may be in the xy it may be in the xz plane as the case may be whatever may be the system xy or two mutually orthogonal direction the motion along x and y or x and z it is not synchronized in both axis it will employ the highest possible velocity since the incremental distance to be covered along x and along y may not be the same so in that case that is why their motion will not be terminated simultaneously and that is what exactly is the, it is written and maximum as designed by the manufacturer hence the motion along different axis won't be terminated simultaneously are the x if if the x the velocity is same v along x v along y so essentially what will be the resultant direction it will be along your incremental movement along x and incremental along y is same then and then only the motion will be terminated or will be completed simultaneously otherwise there will be difference that we will discuss later on this part is very important for the numerical problem solving the traveling time between two successive points is decided by the time required to cover the maximum or longest incremental axial movement along any axis any means either x or y in case of x y either x or z in case of x z combinations this feature is extremely important for calculation of time of movement from one point to the other let us take one example suppose the tool is supposed to move from the point p1 having coordinate x1 x1 y1 or consider x y plane and the target of destination point is p2 identified by x2 y2 now it is expected that tool is supposed to move from p1 to p2 following this path having an inclination alpha with the x axis but it won't move like that so now delta x that is x2 minus x1 or y2 minus y1 are not identical or are different so actually the tool will move following the path p1 q q is the one intermediate point followed by q p2 to complete its journey or movement why it is so if delta x that is x2 minus x1 is greater than y2 minus y1 in which case it will it will happen if the inclination angle alpha is less than 45 degree if it is 45 degree then delta x and delta y will be same if it is more than 45 degree then obviously y2 minus y1 will be more than x2 minus x1 now i have selected arbitrarily that alpha is less than 45 degree that means the straight line joining p1 and p2 is inclined to us it can move towards x axis so in that case we can say the the portion y2 minus y1 since y2 minus y1 or delta y is less than delta x so delta x can be considered as sum of delta y plus some additional extra amount if we consider some incremental movement along x is or delta x is 75 and delta y is 60 So 75 can be written as 60 plus 15. So 60 millimeter movement is common for both x as well as for y, and additional 15 millimeter movement is exclusively for x axis. So for this common part, that is 60 millimeter part, 
both x and y will move simultaneously having the same velocity v max or v and that is why this pq having 45 degree inclination that signifies that up to intermediate point q the movement is coordinated between x and y axis but for the rest 15 mm it is exclusively for x axis because 60 mm regarding y axis movement is already covered up so there is no further movement required for y axis so balance 50 mm 15 mm movement will be exclusively along x axis so that is why the path is p1 q followed by q p2 if instead if you take delta y is more than that uh, than delta x then initially it will be of the 45 degree axis the same way but for the rest of the part, incremental movement of delta y is more than delta x. In that case, balance part will be vertically upward with no x movement. So that is the difference. So according to the scenario, or depending on the magnitude of delta x and delta y, the last part will be either exclusively along x or exclusively along y. And it will be synchronized from the P1 to P2 only when delta x and delta y both are same. Sir. So with respect to the previous drawing, what I have told, just take the mathematical aspect, the tool movement between two successive whole points are identified as P1 having coordinates x1, y1 and P2, x2, y2 as shown in the figure. So incremental distance for x is x2 minus x1 that is delta x and for y axis it is delta y which is equal to y2 minus y1. Since in this particular drawing delta x is more than delta y, obviously the movement along y axis will be completed before x axis since it has to cover lesser distance. Therefore, for the displacement among delta y, the movement along both axis will be same. Do not confuse, I have also mentioned the term delta y but that does not mean the motion is exclusively along y axis. Since it is the minimum between the delta x and delta y, so this minimum portion of movement, the movement will be synchronized along the 45 degree because both are moving at the same maximum velocity. The tool therefore reaches an intermediate point Q following the path PQ. So the tool will reach an intermediate point Q following the path P1 Q which has an inclination. 45 degree with the horizontal and for the rest of the motion which is exclusively along x it will move along q p2 which is represented by a horizontal line along the x axis only once again uh, referring to this figure so p1 to q synchronized motion q to p2 only for x axis but if we are told to calculate what is the cycle time we have to consider the longest distance covered by the any axis whether it may be x y in case of x y it may be x or it may be y if it is x z combination then it may be either x or either z the movement time or the cycle time will be identical only when incremental movement along both axis will be same so for your better understanding, I have written something like that. It is not at all complicated. The total time required to cover the distance from P1 to P2 is T. In this case, S axis will cover longer distance. So it will be governed or dictated by the X axis movement. That is why total time equal to X2 minus X1 by V. And this can be written as Y2 minus Y1 that is incremental part of the Y plus extra amount for delta x which is difference between delta x and delta y. So if we rearrange it will be having y2 minus y1 by v plus delta x by v. As I was talking about this y2 minus y1 by v implies that this minimum amount or minimum common amount movement will be along both x and y simultaneously. That is why this time port I have written as Tc to imply it is common to both x and y and the additional amount that is exclusively for x axis 
that is why delta x by v that is the last part that is uh, in the first the drawing it is the q p2 so eventually it comes tc plus delta tx which is equal to tx so since x uh, along the x axis the distance coverage is more that is why the enter cycle time will be regulated or governed by the x axis so what is t cycle time or the total time that is equal to the tx in this particular case if the delta y moment was more than x2 minus x1 or delta y, then it would have been ty that is y axis moment will be the regulator so this approach to the zero travel time from one point to another point is implemented under g00 command afterwards when we deal with the programming part then this particular g code is used to invoke the point to point motion so that system controller can or the machine tool controller can uh, use this particular point to point interpolation commands dpo calculates this incremental movements along both the axis from the program values and employs common maximum velocity for both axis two problems this is one a very typical problem which is based on this point to point interpolation which was appeared in gate 2020 a point p having coordinate 200 300 on a cnc control xy stage is moved to another point q having coordinate values 800 600 using rapid positioning command within bracket it is told categorically g00 a pair of stepping motors with maximum speed of 800 rpm controls both the x and y motion of the stage the motors are directly coupled to a pair of leads to each with a uniform pitch of 0.5 mm That means that system employed and the leads to both are identical in x as well as y axis. We have to calculate what is the total time required to reach the tool from point P to point Q. So since the movement from point P to Q is accomplished by G zero zero command, both axes will employ the highest possible speed. Okay, that is the maximum as designed by the or set by the machine tool manufacturer who is the programmer has no role to play regarding regulating this highest possible velocity or the movement of velocity during point to point motion and therefore movement on both axis may not be terminated at the same time so from the given data we have calculated the linear speed rpm is given 800 and pitch is given 0.5 for both axis so linear velocity would be 800 into 0.5 that is 400 mm per minute so to calculate the tx we have to consider incremental delta x for pq that is 800 minus 200 and the velocity is 400 mm per minute which we have just calculated so divided by 600 by 400 we will get 1.5 minutes and same thing time required to cover the y distance it is 600 minus 300 by 400 because the velocity remains same for both axis and it will yield 0.75 mm so that implies although the total cycle time i was talking about is 1.5 minute for x axis and it is y it is 0.75 minute so eventually the cycle time will be governed by the x axis moment that is the tx because in this case incremental movement along delta x is more than that of delta y because this difference is 600 along x whereas this difference is 300 it is just half so anyway so the time required for to move from p to q would be therefore becomes 1.5 minutes and that is the answer so very simple problem only thing your understanding has to be clear that don't confuse with the <coughs> statement you have to clearly understand what is the basic merit of the problem another illustrative problem although i have selected this particular uh, problem under the banner point to point but it is not at all related to the interpolation but still this problem is little bit different and make clear it little bit confusion to the students particularly in the exam hall this is also get question 2006 
So that is why I found that it will be useful uh, to club with this particular topic. In the free drive of a point-to-point -point open loop CNC drive, a stepper motor rotating at 200 steps per revolution drives a table through a gearbox and leads to nut mechanism having pitch equal to 4 mm and number of starts equal to 1. The gear ratio it is called categorically output rotational speed by input rotational speed which is given by u equal to 1 fourth. The stepper motor which is driven by a pulse generator executes 1 steps per pulse of the pulse generator. That is the basic philosophy that we had discussed in the open loop control system. The frequency of the pulse strain from the pulse generator is f that is equal to 10,000 pulse per minute. There are two parts of the question. The first part is what is the basic length unit that is the table movement corresponds to one pulse of the pulse generator. Four options are given we have to correct the select the correct one. And the second part a customer insists on modification to change the value of the CNC drive to 10 microns without changing the table speed. The modification can be accomplished by any one of these four options. Let us come to the first one. What are the given data? Since the motor has 200 steps, as many number of pulses will cause one complete revolution of the motor, which in turn rotates the leads to by one fourth times because gear ratio is given as one fourth. Don't confuse. In our earlier discussion, we had introduced the gear ratio as RG which is usually greater than 1. But in this particular problem, just to create a little bit confusion, it is put in a different fashion E equal to 1 by 4. So in that case, you have to directly multiply. Okay, So that is the only difference. So we have multiplied 1 by 4 into, uh, uh, into one complete evolution. So when 200 steps will cause motor to rotate by one complete evolution and since the gear ratio is one fourth so during same time the leads to will rotate only one fourth of the complete revolution and between the leads to and the table and the knot the motion is transmitted from the rotary to linear so the corresponding table movement would be how much one fourth into four millimeter because Pitch given is 4 millimeter. So, one complete turn of the lead screw will induce 4 pitch millimeter linear travel. So, in this case it is 4, so you will get 1 millimeter travel. So, if you correlate, the starting point is 200 steps, means 200 pulse. So, 200 pulses causes 1 millimeter linear displacement of the side. So, what will be the resolution? So, for one step or one pulse, it will be 1 by 200. Mind that it is expressed in micron. All the options are given in microns. So that is why I have to multiply it by 1000 so as to convert millimeter into micron. So that yields 5 microns. So correct option will be B. And in the second one, we have got our the standard relationship BLU equal to P by NS. We used to write P by NS into RG, but here RG is put in a different fashion 1 by U. So in the modified scenario, I have introduced U dash. Okay. So the what is the problem statements? Once again, a customer insists on a modification to change the value of the system drive to 10 microns without changing the table speed. How to accomplish to this modification? How it is possible? That is by changing the gear ratio. So, it take, so, I have taken modified speed uh, gear ratio as u, u dash. So, eventually it comes 1 by u dash equal to BLU into NS by P. All our parameter remains constant. So, BLU, desired BLU is this, is 10 millimeter, 10 mi, sorry, 10 micron. So, 10 into 10 to the power minus 3 to convert it into millimeter. Number of states as usual 200, pitch is given 4 millimeter. So, now, 1 by u dash becomes half. So, if we can increase the number of rotation, we can have another resolution that is 10 micron, which is rather worse as compared to the previous one, because the smaller resolution or BLU is preferred. In the earlier it was 5 microns, 
but in this case it was increased to 10 microns so that is possible only by changing the gear ratio keeping all other parameter constant so correct option is c only thing is that if you once again just to have a closer look to the what are the combinations one is change in u another is frequency so this particular problem highlights that the frequency has no role to play as regard to the resolution this frequency is only regarding other aspect regarding encoder gain but as far as the resolution part is concerned it has nothing to do with the frequency so this particular problem clearly illustrate that frequency has got no significance for regulating the basic length unit okay so the correct option is c okay so thank you very much for your patience hearing thank you sir for your support and help if you have any queries you can ask me and we can communicate thank you